Well, first of all, thanks every, all, for all the sailors who are on the call. Uh, we're really excited for our second uh, joint yacht club clinic of uh, the fall. The first one was really great. I've, you know, there were tons of boats on the water. A lot of people kept saying, I've never seen this many boats out, which is great. And um, so, and, you know, part of the inspiration for doing this actually was, uh, you know, my friend Steve Hunt here, who's about to talk to you guys. Um, we've been running this 420 program that's brought together a lot of different sailors from a lot of different yacht clubs in Southern California. And um, Steve has always said, you know, to me that bringing together a lot of motivated sailors and that want to sail in a group uh, really help every lift everybody up and help make everybody get a lot better. So, uh, you know, it's fitting that Steve is here to talk to you guys tonight. Um, Steve is a uh, three-time world champion and the all-time winningest high school coach with 11 national championships. Um, he's also won 15 national and North American championships. He's a writer for Sailing World a US, and a U.S. sailing team coach. And I've also seen video evidence of him court tacking the fleet with the last two Sabbath national champions in it. So he sails Sabbaths himself. So um, there's no one better to talk to you about how to start your Sabbath um, than Steve. And um, so before I turn it over to him, I just wanted to say uh, I'm going to be leaving the call shortly after introducing Steve uh, because I have to go to another meeting about planning the Corinthian Cup which is coming up on October 17th and 18th. BCYC is gonna host you all. Um, we're gonna run a great event uh, with uh, two circles on Saturday and three circles on Sunday. Um, we're really excited about it. And uh, we hope you all come, come out and we have a great turnout. Um, it should be some great racing and a two day regatta, which is a, a move up of course. Um, so that's awesome, and we're super excited about it. Um, so uh, anyways, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to my friend Steve. And then uh, after Steve, Adrian will take over for me and explain my drills for tomorrow. I can't wait to see you guys all on the water. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks for having me, Aubrey. Cool. So can I share my screen here, Brooke? Are you running the show? Let me try. Yes, Quickly. you should be good to go. Okay, cool. All right, well, first of all, thanks for having me, everybody. Well, it's an honor to be here. It sounds like you have a great clinic planned. Uh, I love starting, and uh, Aubrey asked me to start about, or talk about starting, and uh, I really enjoy the topic. I've given a lot of speeches about it recently, and they take about an hour and a half. So Aubrey said keep it to 15 or 20 minutes, which will be hard for me. So I'm not gonna talk about a lot of the things I know, but I figured I'd tell some stories and I give you the biggest tips that I can uh, in a short amount of time that'll, that'll help you. So I like to tell stories. Uh, so I figured I'd start with a story. Well, I, I grew up in Virginia and I did not sell Opti's and they don't have Sabbaths there. So I moved to California 20 years ago and about four or five years ago, I got asked to come to a, a Sabbath regatta. And I had never been in a boat before, and I always liked to win, so I figured, all right, yeah, sure, it'll be fun. And there was 28 boats. It was in Coronado, which some of you have maybe sailed there, right by the Yacht Club, so small little space. And uh, Dennis Connor was out there in his old wooden boat watching, and Bill Hardesty was there, and Tyler Sinks was there, and all these guys that have won two Sabbath National Championships, and then a handful of other people that have won one Sabbath National Championship. A lot of great sailors and some young sailors there as well. But it was just this fun regatta with 28 really great sailors and uh, in the evening with probably six or seven races. And cool thing is I won. And it was my first time in the boat. And so I figured I'd explain how I did that. And, and a lot of it was starting. So I borrowed this boat. Here's a picture Island Surf uh, from Willem Van Way who lives in Coronado. And I got out on the race course early and I just tried to figure out the boat. 
And people told me, sail flat on starboard tack because there's a lee board, maybe even maybe a heel to windward, but definitely flat. And then on port, you can heel over a little bit to put the dagger board in the, in the water. And so I went out and I practiced that dead flat on starboard, maybe a tiny bit of heel on port. And I got used to the race course. And this is something that you should all do. And I noticed that there were these massive left shifts. If you started and went straight, you would get this huge left shift. Every once in a while, there were some small right shifts, but it was shifty and puffy, big left shift. So if you went left, you'd get a header, you could tack, and you'd look pretty good. So I learned that. And then I went down to the starting line and did some practice starts. Uh, and I'll show you a little a diagram here, just of, of an example. This is just a path that one could take with three minutes in a sequence. They could be here at three, sail this way, jibe around two minutes, sail back the other way, tack, and then get ready to start. Or for practice starts, you can just give yourself, you know, 30 second countdowns and, and trim it and just sail across the starting line. And that's what I did. You could do loops or you could just do a few accelerations across the line. And what you're looking for is how fast your boat accelerates and at what angle you accelerate. Are you aiming at the pin, meaning the pin's favored? Is your bow up and you're sailing more towards the committee boat as you cross the starting line, meaning the boat's favored? You know, how long does it take to get to the starting line from a couple lengths away? And you just get a feel for it. So I did that a few times. Uh, and then when the regatta started, and I'll be complete honesty here, I noticed that the uh, race committee was a friendly guy who was friends with everyone there. And it was supposed to be a fun regatta. And I thought, you know, I wonder how hard he's going to call the starting line. I wonder if I push the starting line a little bit is he going to call me? And there were so many boats. There's basically 30 boats. And it was a small starting line. I thought, I wonder if I start down near the pin, because I like the left, will I ever be called over? And I know that I don't know the boat. I'm not that fast. So the only way I can win is to push the starting line. Uh, so that was my game plan. And here's a trophy ceremony. Uh, Willem gave me a t-shirt. <laughs> and then here's a picture of the start. So this is one of the starts. And here I am, right here in 9846. You can see the Island Surf logo vaguely. That's Dennis Connor's boat right over there. And I was front row, bow even or ahead of the boat to lured of me with speed at the gun. And I pushed the starting line. And you can even see here, I'm, I probably was not over looking at all the boats, but my goal was to push the line hard and be bow even or bow forward on other boats. And what I learned in, in the tuning that I did, and subsequently I bought a Sabbath for my kids and myself, and I've raced it four or five times since then, uh, four or five times this year. So I feel a little more confident in the Sabbath lately. And uh, the other night I sailed in the Monday night thing with 20 boats and I got like a fifth, all good starts, but I was slow. Then I went out the next Monday and practiced a bunch for two hours before the first start because I hate losing. And I figured out how to make the boat go a little bit faster. And then that night I won. Uh, so, so two of the three big events I've won. And I guarantee you it's 100% because of my starting. Because I'm not that fast. And, and I weigh 170 pounds, which I think is a little bit big for a Sabbath. But a few things that I've learned that I'll share. It seems as though if you're bow back on a boat to lured of you, if someone is to lured of you in a Sabbath, it's really hard to go fast. I think the boats don't like bad lanes. You know, where FJ, maybe you can point to the moon, you can hang in a tough lane, but a Sabbath, it seems like you need a huge lane. So you need to put priority on being bow even or ahead of the boat to lure it of you. And I think you do that by trimming in a little bit before them and accelerating a little bit better. But being bow back is tough. Uh, another thing I learned was that tacking is painful. Uh, there's a tacking penalty in the Sabbath. And I, you know, I sail a bunch of different boats. Uh, I sail for a living and I sail all sorts of boats. And some boats don't tack well and some boats do. An FJ in light air, you can actually gain speed in attack. A laser in light air, you can gain speed in attack. A hundred foot yacht, 
takes two minutes to tack and, and you lose huge. A Sabbath, I feel like I lose huge in tax. I feel like I stop almost. And I know some of you can tack better than that, but I found it was kind of hard to uh, tack and cross people if the pin was favored. And, and if, you, if I had a bad start and I had to tack out, the penalty was so bad, meaning the loss was so huge, I, ha I would have a really hard time doing well. Uh, so before the starts, I like to get near a mark and do some practice starts and some practice accelerations and see how long it takes to trim in and get going and get, maybe give myself a 10 second countdown and just trim in and go near a mark and see if I can get to that mark within those 10 seconds. If it took longer, I set up closer or I trim in earlier. Uh, if I got there too quickly, I'd say, oh, okay, I accelerate pretty quickly. And I also think a Sabbath, Sabbath accelerates fairly quickly. If you're bowed down, and I'll show you an example here. Uh, this is the Tyler Sinks method, who's won multiple, he's won four Sabbath national championships, two as a kid and two as an adult. He sits here like this. I've raced against him recently. He, he sits there luffing, bow down with the main out. And I think that's a huge tip in this limited talk. In, in doing so, I think when you trim in, the boat really takes off. I learned if you're bow up kind of close hauled and you trim in the Sabbath pretty tight, I think it's because there's no jib actually, but when you trim in, you kind of go sideways and the boat doesn't really get going. That's if your bow's up. But if your bow's real deep and you're sitting there with a luffing boom out over the left side of the boat, and as you start to trim that main end, the boat takes off. And then you head up to close hauled and you're, and you're flying. You're going fast at that point. So in racing against Tyler recently, who wins most regattas that I sail against him in and was the best high school kid I've ever coached, he does this bow down luffing thing. And then if he wants to kind of mess with you, he'll go bow down and, and sail at you a little bit. And if, if you're right here, you kind of get scared and trim in and go, or he just hooks you and heads up and luffs you. And then he has your hole. So by luffing low, it gives him this ability to A, trim in quickly and then head up and be fast. And then B, defend his hole and or try to steal the hole uh, of people near him. Uh, so that's something maybe you try. This is kind of a look of it. He's luffing low. He might do a little juke down at you and you either defend or not. If you don't defend, you'll steal your hole. If you do defend, you'll just head right back up and, and chill again. All the while being ready to trim in and go at any point. So before I talk anymore, have any, anybody have any questions? Uh, well, the one thing I want to add before I ask for, have questions. In trimming in and sailing across the line a few times, you really get a great feel of what ends favored. And if the pin's favored, you probably want to start near the pin. And if the boat's favored, you probably want to start near the boat. Then with that knowledge, you, you go into everything I just said, where you set up and the luffing. And yeah, I saw a hand up. Uh, Jeff, you got a question, buddy? You want to unmute yourself? Um, do you have, when you tack, yeah. um, which side is it m most important to be on? Do you, um, do you like to be on starboard when you try to go, um, past the starting line or on port? That's a good question. It's a brilliant question because in boats with tacking penalties, such as catamarans, 100 foot boats, sabots <laughs> for me because I can't tack well. Uh, I've seen Peter Bush tack well and he's you know, won the Sabbat Nationals. So maybe for him it's different. But I do see some of the smarter adults starting on port sometimes. If they can do it and it's clean and the line's big enough and it's not too crowded. But in the absence of that, in general, you want to start on starboard because you have the right of way. So I'd say 90% of the time you start on starboard. It's safer, you have right of way. I have seen a few clever sailors start on port when it's really pan favored and port tack is almost aiming at the windward mark. Meaning if you start on starboard, you're almost sailing sideways to the weather mark. But if you get on port, you're aiming at the weather mark. In those scenarios, I've seen a few people start on port and do well, but the risk is 
if someone's coming at you on starboard, you might have to tack, and now you're in trouble. So I'd probably start on starboard if I had a choice. Uh, but I like your question. That's good. A any other thoughts or questions? Am I still sharing my screen? I don't think so. Let me just look at my uh, notes real quick with everybody. And I know I have two minutes left. I'll say I have 20 minutes. I have two minutes left. Uh, so start near the favorite end. You can tell that by luffing head to wind before the start in the center of the starting line. Make your boom luff in the middle of the boat, where if you poke your head up, it hits you in the head. And whatever end your bow is pointing to is the favorite end. The more it's pointing one way or the other, the more it matters to be there. The more extreme it is, the more it matters to be there. The reason is you're starting upwind of everyone else and you're literally ahead of the race immediately. It's like, it's like starting a hundred yard dash 10 yards ahead of everybody. Like think if you could do that in a running race, Hey, you can start 10 yards ahead. Go ahead. You can do that in a sailboat race by starting at the favorite end. Next thing is be in the front row. You have to be in the front row. Bad air and sabots, bad lanes and sabots, tacking and sabots are all painful. So you need to be able to trim in and accelerate and sail for a little bit and let others fade back. Uh, when you do go to accelerate, make sure your bow is a little lower than you might think. You know, your bow down a little bit. And then when you trim in, the boat really takes off. Then you can head up to a close old course. And I think that's what I have. Those are my main tips. Uh, anybody else have any questions on starting? I could talk to you for another hour on starting, but I know you have other things to get to. So uh, is it Pepe or Xavier? I see a lot of names are Pepe. What's up, buddy? What you got? Um, so I don't know about other people, but um, me personally, I like when my boat's tipped and I think it goes faster. Um, is that true or does it like just look like – look like that like you like try to put some weight in the middle sometimes like i would say that in really light air healing to leeward on starboard and port is fast just a little bit but okay. as the breeze as the breeze comes up you if you sail heel to leeward you'll start to feel your tiller pulling on your hand and that was that was the big thing i did in the sabbath to try to figure out how to go faster i kept feeling the tiller. And if the tiller is pulling on your hand, it's slow. It may feel good because you can feel something, but it's faster to sail dead flat. And, and when you know you're flat is when your tiller extension in your hand goes soft and there's no pull. Now that you're not dragging your rudder and it's faster. So in theory, you should sail flat. I would say to where your tiller is neutral and the boat wants to go straight if you were to let go of your tiller. That is fast. Okay. with the one exception being it's really light and then you scoot in a little bit towards the middle of the boat like you said and let it heal over a hair then gravity is actually holding your sail out and that's better even though you have a tiny bit of helm okay. anybody, anybody else Just cruising around here Brooke Listen, I think you have a question right go ahead and unmute yourself yeah, Lucy McCray. Um, yeah. Um, wait, which side did you say was the favorite side again? Of the starting line? Yeah. Well, if the line is actually square, meaning as you sail across it, you're not really aiming towards the boat or the pen, you sail off at a 45 degree angle, then in theory, no, no end is favored, but I like to start a third down from the committee boat if it's a square starting line. That's a nice safe place to start. And then you have a lot of people to your left on starboard. If they tack, you're on starboard. But if you want to go right, you still can. It's a nice, beautiful place to start if the line's squared. But if you trim in and sail across the starting line and you're bowed down, aiming at the pin, which is the left side of the starting line, that side's favored. But if you trim in and sail across the starting line and your bow's really up, meaning you feel very lifted, you're almost aiming at the windward mark, then the committee boat in the right side of the line's favored. With all that said, if you ever go head to wind, if the committee boat's favored, you'll be aiming towards it. If it's square, you'll be aiming directly at the weather mark, you know, square to the line, 90 degrees. And if the pin's favored, you'll be luffing towards the pin. 
So you, you want to start towards the end that you're aiming at when you're luffing head to wind, either the left side or the right side of the starting line. And then literally, literally you're closer to the weather mark. So you end up sailing less distance to get to that mark, which is a beautiful thing. So if I were to leave you guys with anything, figure out the favorite end, make sure you're in the front row and push the starting line. I think a lot of Sabbath sailors, they're new, they're a little nervous. They're like, oh, I'm going to hang back here and not get in anybody's way. And, and you're guaranteed to get bad results that way. It's better to be fearless and just get up there in the front row and trim in early and send it. <laughs> and let the coaches tell you you're over. If you have to go back, you're in the same spot you would have been anyway, in the third row. But if you're not over, you're styling. You're out in the front of the race and you get all excited. Like the, the best, I'll leave it with this. The best sailor ever, Paul Elvstrom, he won four gold medals. He said he put 90% of his energy into the start, 90% of his race energy into the start. And he found if he got a great start, he got so excited that energy carried him throughout the whole race. And he was probably the best sailor that's ever lived. So I recommend doing that. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Last chance. Awesome, Steve. Thank you so much for your time on this uh, Thursday night. We're so fortunate that you are willing to share your passion and knowledge with uh, us up in Newport Beach and Long Beach area. Um, you know, Steve is definitely a, a sailing idol and sailing idol coach of mine. And anytime I get to listen to him do a chat talk, um, I told him the other day, it just makes me want to get on the water um, and makes me even more passionate about coaching. So, uh, thank you so much, Steve, and we'll see you guys soon. Cool. And everyone else, the sailors, stay on, on, on the Zoom call, please. Perfect. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Good luck this weekend, everybody. Have fun. You guys, why don't we give him two thumbs up? Ready? On the count of three, two thumbs up. One, two, three. Woo. Awesome. Right, Steve. Okay, see you later. Okay, so, guys, um, hopefully you guys, like, I took my phone out during that meeting, right? And I love Sabbaths more than anything. And even I took a picture of what Steve said were the special tips, right? You, there's no way you're too good to not still take notes, all right? So even as a coach, I still take notes when I'm um, you know, hearing a good chat talk from, from somebody. But uh, moving forward, hopefully your directors sent out the email um, to you. If not, they'll send it later this afternoon or this evening. Um, with our plan for the joint training session tomorrow. Uh, we have modified it a little bit to hopefully make it better and more productive for you guys, uh, taking into account what we did on the last joint practice. So what we're gonna do, we'll talk about the drills and the order in which you guys are gonna do the drills. Uh, so first up, the A's through C2s are gonna meet us out in the turning basin and uh, our warm-up drill is going to be called the Around the World Drill. Uh, so, can you guys, Brooke, can you guys see my screen, Cam? Is that close enough or no? Yeah, it looks yeah. good. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we're going to set two marks in the water, and you guys are literally going to reach, tack around the mark, reach, dive around the mark, and it's around the world. And you may have done this in novice and sabbats, okay? And you can take this drill all the way up into Olympic sailing. So every single day in college sailing, I went to St. Mary's, and every single day we went out there and started our, our day uh, by doing the around the world. The around the world can be super basic, like you did in novice, um, to a super advanced. So some of the things that I want you guys to be thinking about during this warm-up drill um, is we are going to be focusing on proper sail trim. One of the things that I found in Sabbaths, right, we do a lot of those outer trapezoids with you guys, and we're reaching, and you guys are sailing around with your sail too tight, right? And it's really easy to do that because the front of the sail's not luffing, right? When your front of your sail luffs, you guys are really good at pulling the sail in. But what I want us to work on more as a team, as a group, is watching the front of the sail and looking at your telltales. And if your telltales are dropped down, that means when you're on a reach course that your sail is over trimmed, which means you're slowing down, right? So I want you guys to be really focusing on watching your sail trim. 
and always constantly be adjusting it. You should never just hold this, the main sheet in one spot. You should always be trying to ease it to try to get it just right, but not too much where then the sale starts bubbling, okay? So um, it's really easy to check out and just like point to your next mark, but uh, you're not gonna be getting as much out of the drill if you're spacing out on the sale trim. Another thing you should be thinking about is when you are approaching the mark that you're gonna tack around, you would be approaching the mark on a reach. But to be able to tack, right, you have to head up all the way to a close all angle, which means we wanna see that lured heel as you start to head up around the mark. I wanna see you guys trimming in your sail. Maybe I should use a lighter colored boat so you can see it. You should be trimming in the sail as the rate of turn that you're doing. So if you pull your sail into a close haul course when you're still on a reach, you're slowing down, right? So really practice the rate of turn and the rate in which you're pulling in the main sheet to get to a close hauled angle. And then I wanna see every single sailor getting on the rail and performing a roll tack and then coming out with the sail nice and eased, aiming right at your next mark. Okay, so we talked about proper sail trim. We talked about at this re, uh, at the mark where you're tacking around, ensuring you're using your lure weight to help head the boat up as you're slowly trimming in the main sheet, not pushing the tiller over all the way until your sail's all the way trimmed into an upwind angle. After you trim into an upwind angle, you're gonna throw in a nice roll tack, really push it. I'd love to see myself have to pick somebody up that flipped because they're pushing the roll tack. Our fleet needs to roll tack harder. That's so an area that all A's can work on, okay? Rolling the boat more and perfecting that, okay? And then um, another thing you're working on in this around the world is like, where do you wanna be? How do you keep your air clean and still try to position your boat to be on the inside at that mark, whether you're tacking around the mark or jiving around the mark, okay? Something else I wanna see us work on as a team is as we're going around the mark where you're jiving, we need to be working on healing our boat to weather and easing our sail all the way and then do a nice flick of the main sheet, jive the boat around and have a nice exit angle with the proper boat heel around that jive mark there. So there's plenty of things that we can work on, roll jives, roll tacks, sail trim, ensuring the boat's not healing to weather if it's light air, or not healing the boat to leeward and breeze on, depending on what we get tomorrow. Does anyone have any questions um, about all rules apply, starboard report, inside uh, at the mark, all applies? Does anyone have any questions about the out around the world drill? Get off mood if you do, and just ask your question. Okay, any coaches have anything they wanna add to that? Okay. We are going to do two separate warmups um, with around the world. I'll be running one of them and Aubrey will be running the other one. Um, I will take the C2 fleet, okay? So when you guys get out there, if you're a C2 sailor, find me and you're gonna start working on the around, around the world. If you're A, B or C1, you're gonna be looking for Aubrey. So that way we don't have so many sailors on one course. Okay, next up, an improvement um, for this practice tomorrow. If you can see the whiteboard, can you guys read that? We're gonna talk about the A's, B's, and C1, or the A's and B's first. You guys are gonna be grouped together, okay? And we're gonna rotate. So if you're an A or B, after the around the world, the first person that you're gonna go sail to is Coach Cameron. And Coach Cameron is gonna run his drill. Okay, and then after 15 minutes of doing that drill with Coach Cameron, the A's and B's are then gonna go see Aubrey. And after 15 minutes of doing the drill with Aubrey, you're then gonna come see me. So either you guys can write this down right now or your coaches will send this out and you can print it and, and keep it in your boat. But how this is gonna run better than last, uh, last joint practice is if everyone's on the same page and knows what coach they're gonna be going to see next for the drill and doing it quickly. If you're a C1 sailor, the first person you're gonna do your first drill with is gonna be Aubrey. Then the next, after that, 15 minutes later, the C1s are gonna come see me. 
And then lastly, the C1s are gonna see Coach Cam. C2s, like I said, you guys are gonna start the drill of the around the world with me, and then we'll roll right into my drill. And then after the C2s finish the first drill with me, they're gonna go to Cameron. And then after that, they're gonna go to Aubrey. So you guys are gonna be rotating between three different drills run by three different directors. Make sure you guys know this order. It'll really help us uh, speed up the transitional time between um, each drill. Okay, the warm up will start at four o'clock on the dot. If you're late, you're late and you'll just pop into whatever drill um, we've moved on to. The drills are gonna be 15 minutes, so that's not very much time, right? So it's really important as a fleet that we work together and stay on task, stay near the starting line. Of course, if you guys could guess, the drills that we're gonna be doing after the Steve Hunt Chat Talk is gonna be practice on starts, okay? Um, what I'm gonna do next, and then after you guys do those three drills and rotate around, we're really excited to try something that we've never done before. We are gonna put all the A's, B's, C1's, and C2's on the same starting line. And we're gonna do one big, huge race. And that's what the East Coast does. They put all, all uh, uh, Opti racers together and you're in a fleet of 70 boats and you race against 70 other sailors. And so we predict that there'll be 70 Sabbath sailors between the classes of A all the way up through C2. So that's how we're gonna round out the day. It's gonna be super fun. Um, and I'll talk about my drill. Uh, or Kim, why don't we uh, have you, do you wanna talk about your drill right now? Just to break up the chat talk? Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, A's and B's will be with me first, as Adrian said, but um, the cool thing is I get to work with all the fleets. Um, so all the fleets are gonna be exposed to all the coaches, which is, is the goal here. Um, and so with me, we're gonna be doing a drill called Sharks and Minnows. I'm sure some of you have done this before. This is gonna be basically forcing half of you guys to start on starboard um, near the boat and have a starboard approach. And then the other half of you are gonna be forced to try a port approach and then we'll switch. Okay, so as you can see um, from the screen share here, we've got a starting line and um, the starboard side of the line is gonna be the minnows and the port side of the line is gonna be the sharks. And you have to stay on your side uh, until we get further along in the sequence. So we'll, we'll kick off the sequence. It's gonna be a three minute sequence. Let's minnows see, are gonna be- Since we have such short time, we're gonna do two minutes maybe? Sorry, say that again? You wanna maybe do two minutes since we only, we only have 15 minutes, maybe? Guys, please um, stop crying on the screen. Yeah, we can, uh, we can do that. We can shorten the sequence a little bit. So in that case, if we're, we're gonna do a two minute sequence, the minnows are gonna have to be ready to go. So I'm gonna wait for everybody to get to their respective sides before starting the sequence. Um, and it'll be helpful for us all in terms of time if you guys head to where you're supposed to be right away. You might, might wonder, how am I gonna know if I'm a shark or a minnow? Well, we're gonna go by sail number, okay? So if your sail ends in an odd number, like 9431, that would be a minnow to start, okay? If your sail ends in an even number, like 9822, you're gonna be a shark to start. So I'll make that very clear with my loud hailer when we're out there to remind everybody, but make sure you know your odds from your evens so that you, you go to the right spot. So we'll start our two minute sequence. The minnows are allowed to enter the starting box right away. So um, minnows can enter at two minutes and must be set up on the line by one minute, okay? So when you're a minnow, you're gonna need to get you know, in position early and hold your position. So this drill is gonna um, work on holding position. It, if it's light, you know, that shouldn't be too tough. If it's windy, it gets harder. But um, there's a, a few different techniques you can use to, to keep your boat in one spot. So once the minnows are all set up, hopefully everyone's in place by one minute. After that minute, the sharks can enter from port, but not before that minute. All right, so sharks are gonna be practicing their final approach 
on port um, and they're looking for holes because all the minnows are gonna already be on the line and uh, there's gonna be gaps between the minnows and that's where the sharks come in. Um, so sharks are trying to find a hole, minnows are trying to defend their hole and keep the sharks from stealing their hole. But um, you know, we'll see how that goes. And then it'll be probably a short, um, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds after the gun before I'll call everyone back. But it's important that you don't come back right away. Even if you have a, a lousy start, try to, you know, practice like a race. And so hold your lane as best you can. If you can't hold your lane, tack out right away, get a good lane, get on the uh, either the favor tack, whichever one you, you prefer at that point. And then um, listen for a, a sequence of whistles, you know, beep, 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 call everyone back to do another one. And then we're gonna switch. So we'll have um, the minnows go be sharks and then everyone who is a shark will come be a minnow. All right, any questions about that drill? Cool. Okay, next up we'll talk about um, Aubrey's drill. Um, can you share screen again for a hot second? Yeah. So Aubrey's drill is going to be, um, sorry, hold on one second, a mystery, a, myst a mystery weather mark, okay? So I'll draw it on my whiteboard as well, if you guys wanna check that out. There's gonna be a start line, okay? And there's gonna be two weather marks to windward. So there's gonna be a right weather mark and a left weather mark. And within the last one minute, the coach on the loud hailer, Aubrey, is gonna hail, you're racing to the right mark. Okay, so within the last one minute, if you're set up at the pin, right, with your final approach and, you, and you're set up at the pin and all of a sudden we hail within the last one minute that you're racing to the right mark, you have a big decision to make. Do you think that that pin end is favored enough for you to get off the line and be able to cross the fleet to hightail it to the right mark? Or maybe not, maybe the pin isn't favored enough or you don't think you'll be able to quickly be able to tack and cross the fleet. So maybe at one minute, you readjust your game plan and you find a way to get out of the spot you're at and reset up a little bit as close as you can more to the right side, okay? Vice versa, maybe in that at one minute, so it's a two minute sequence, and at one minute, Aubrey will say left, left, left mark. And if you're started at the race committee boat and you're set up there, you have to decide, is the race committee boat so favored that you'll just be able to start on starboard and fetch and lay the weather mark and be to windward of the fleet? Or no, maybe, maybe not. If you have to go to the left mark and the, the boat end's not favored, maybe you're gonna go up and over the fleet and then try to get down into a hole and start closer to the pin end. Maybe that's favored, okay? So now this drill is kind of practicing, of course, your acceleration, uh, knowing what side of the line is favored, but that may change your game plan depending on where that weather mark is. And that's kind of insinuating and like trying to uh, try to basically uh, show you guys that basically you may, your game plan could have been to go to the left side before the sequence because you thought there was a big puff, but maybe that puff is no longer there and now you see something crazy coming down on the right hand side and you see it filling there. Do you have those skill sets to see that and then be able to reset up on the starting line in a different spot within a minute? Okay, so that's called the mystery weather mark drill. After you round the weather mark, whatever one he tells you, you're always gonna be rounding it to port. So if it's the left one, you're rounding like this. And if it's a right weather mark, same thing, you're rounding it like this. And then you're gonna finish the race downwind and then you're gonna start over. So it's gonna be really short weather marks, okay? Just so you guys know, it's not gonna be a long weather beat. Any questions about the mystery weather mark? No? Anyone? You can get off mute if you have a question, otherwise I'm gonna keep going. This is gonna be the last drill we talk about. You guys are doing a good job. Okay, 
my drill that I'm going to be running with my group, and I have the, I start off with the C2s. Okay, my drill is going to be called, do you want to share your screen again? Sorry. Sure. You to work, Brooke. Uh, <laughs> my drill is going to be called the start, if I remember correctly, I called it the start. Oh gosh, where is it? Hold on. Oh, thank you. Start, stop, accelerate. I love this drill, and I'll tell you why. This drill is awesome. Okay, so what you're gonna do is gonna be a two minute sequence, like all the other sequences for these drills. Okay, you're gonna do a two minute sequence, and you're gonna start on the line, and it's gonna be a pretty long line, okay? The line's gonna be pretty long. I should do that. So my goal would be to try to have you guys all be front row on the line at go full speed. So you're practicing like fleet management, trying not to start in a crowd. Try to find an open spot. Open spots are great. You can do what Steve said. You can, you can be low on the line, right, in your own little spot, bow down with a nice acceleration. It's a lot easier to accelerate when the bow's down. I could not agree with him more on that situation. Um, and so you're practicing all the things that uh, we talked about for the starts. And then after the start, everyone needs and is required to be on starboard. No port, port tax, okay? Everyone has to be on starboard. And after you guys start the race, no matter where you are, there's no tacking allowed. When I blow one whistle, you guys are all gonna stop your boat by letting your sail out and heading up. And at this point, I don't care so much where you are in the group, okay? We already practiced the start, just left your sail. And now what I'm looking for on this drill is I'm gonna then blow, once you're stopped, I'll blow five, four, three, two, one. And by the last whistle, your goal is to be up to full speed. This is really good for acceleration practice, which is required to have a good start. So if I was listening to Steve's talk and I'm a Sabbath sailor right now, I think, okay, I'm gonna stop my boat by going head to wind, okay, and luffing my sail. But Steve told us, that luffing and trying to go to a full acceleration from head to wind or even tight on a close hauled angle is really difficult. So what I probably do, stop my boat head to wind, make sure I'm fully stopped. Then I'd leave my sail luffing and I just turn the angle of my boat down a little bit, but I'm still luffing. So I'm not surging for it, I'm fully stopped. And then that way, when I blow the five, all you're doing is trimming in the sail a little bit, heeling the boat to leeward, big flatten as you're trimming in the mainsail and you should jet forward, okay? So that's something that I think we should practice as a fleet and it'll really help our starts. And I like this, so it's not about who's the furthest forward because if you are trying just to zoom forward of your fleet when we're all supposed to be stopped, that's not the point of the drill. The point of the drill is I could be super stoked if I see someone you know, back here so obviously they're doing the worst if you were sailing up wind and whatnot. But if they're luffing and everyone's luffing and this person has the best bow down acceleration, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for how far you are in front of the fleet. That's not what the drill is designed to do. Okay. And we'll do a few of those. Practice stop and goes. And then once you hear a lot of whistles, wherever you are, you're going to race down to me and finish with your sail um, out and finishing through the start line on the downwind angle. So that's my drill. So we, do we, we did, oh, whoa, nice cat, Connor. Um, so anyway, that's, those are the two drills. Cam did his drill. And then Brooke, do you want to talk about your C3 stuff? Yeah. Oh, and lastly, then we'll, we'll, we'll end the A's or C2s with one big giant race. Yeah. Um, Adrian, do you want to give them a little bit of tips on how to stop their boat effectively um, as far yeah. as instead of just luffing maybe? Yeah, and a sabot, I mean, you can stop your boat like a lot of different ways. It depends on like what your coach's, um, you know, approaches. But personally, like I'm not a fan personally of backwinding my sail. Um, backwinding your sail tells me that you approach the line too high to start. And now you're running out of real estate because you're getting too close to the line and you're having to stop your boat. So I personally don't backwind my sail when I'm sailing sabots or FJs. Um, so is uh so what I personally do to stop my boat is I'll push the tiller away pretty quickly, 
and then I just turn my boat head to wind or even slightly past head to wind. So almost like fake tacking, but you have to be careful that you don't fail a starboard boat when you're stopping your boat by going a little bit past head to wind. So that's maybe a little more advanced, but um, when I'm approaching low on the line and I'm in my region of where I want to stop, I'll turn up really quickly, kind of go past head to wind, the sail lefts, and then I go straight head to wind. And then I don't hold this for too long just because you're gonna start going backwards. Then I start turning my, pivoting my boat and just leave my sail luffing. But the crucial thing about this is that you're picking a good spot and really working on trying to get as close as you can to the weather boat so that you can carve out that, that hole to lure of you. Cam, do you have anything else you wanna to add to stopping your boat? Yeah, I agree that uh, if you're backwinding, you're late on, on stopping, you should, be thinking five, five, six steps ahead, right? And so um, when you see the spot you want to stop, start slowing down early, kind of like in a follow leader drill. You're on a reach most of the time for that, so you can't backwind. You have to start slowing your boat down by easing your sail early enough and maybe heading up a little bit um, in order to do that. So your boat shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to stop on a dime. You should be able to coast to a stop where you need to be. And like Adrian said, with your tiller, it's a hard motion. And generally, if you want to accelerate, we're not telling you to throw your tiller to the side because that stops your boat. So that is when you take advantage of that movement. Awesome. Cool. All right. So A's through C2s, you guys are knowing your drills. Um, C3s, we're going to do modified as usual. Um, we're gonna work on, one of our drills is gonna work on starts. We're gonna do box drill. And we are also going to do a modified slalom kind of like last week. So I will share my screen and show you these couple drills. So there will be two different courses set up. Uh, gotta get rid of you, Adrian, sorry. Okay, um, so we're gonna do, can everyone see this? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna do a slalom course. It's modified from last clinic that we did. You're not gonna have a start sequence at the beginning of it. Um, it's more, looks kind of like a spaceship. So you're gonna start and round. The wind is coming from the top of the course. You're going to round your first mark, ease your sail as you come around that first mark to head down to your second mark. And what I really want you guys focusing on during this is easing and then tightening your sails. I don't want you guys like the um, A's through C2s are doing, I don't want you to just hold in your sail. You guys are supposed to ease and tighten as you guys are heading up and down. Um, it'll keep your speed going. So you'll have a couple opportunities to trim in as you're heading up wind and a couple opportunities to ease as you're heading back down to the next mark. Once you round the last mark off the top ones, you're going to need to jibe like you would at a reach mark. Um, then you're going to come down to your leeward mark and practice a leeward mark rounding. So what I want to see from you guys there is you want to practice a wide then tight mark rounding. So um, Adrian, can you help me out with your boats here? Sure. Cool. Um, and you, sorry. All right. Um, so on a wide and then tight mark rounding, a lot of you guys tend to get what we call pinwheeled. Um, you don't want to be on the outside if you can. So Adrian's going to demonstrate a pinwheel for us where you don't want to be that yellow boat or that green boat coming around that mark because you're, as Steve said, you know, farther away from your finish line. So you want to make sure that you either have the inside track or you can slow your boat down and you can work your way behind the other boats to make, make that mark rounding. So as they're coming around, you may wanna slow down so that you can get up wind, yep, and then as they come around, that red boat wants to be tight as they can to the mark as they're heading up with their sail trimming in, like Adrian said, at the rate that you're moving your tiller. So you don't want to just throw your tiller away from you and head up with your sail all the way out because then you're going to be luffing. You want to trim in quickly as you're turning up. Um, 
So thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Sales don't want to stay in, but that's okay. Um, so does anyone have any questions about this drill? Hey, Brooke, one thing I, before the questions, I really mm -hmm. like this drill that you designed. Uh, I think it's awesome because I've, have really been liking working with the C3s at some of the regattas. And one of the things that I've noticed is when you guys round the lured mark here and you're going up to the finish, you guys like either round the mark and then really quickly tack, which is bad because then you're coming into the boats that are also coming downwind and they also have wakes off their boat. So now you're like going into the wakes of the downwind boats, right? And it just required, Steve said, tacking's really slow and sabots, right, generally. Um, so why, why throw a tack in when you don't really need to? And then you're probably not even fetching your finish line anyway, which would require another tack, and then maybe even another tack. So the drill that Brooke just designed really kind of reinforces the concept, right, of just having a nice, wide, and then tight lured mark rounding and holding your lane and just say, working on boat speed, making sure your sail's trimmed in, making sure you're all the way up on the wind, but not pinching and luffing your sail, and just focus on boat speed and don't rush that tack. No need to rush that tack. So yeah, Brooke, that's Adrian, that's a great point because that does happen a lot. I work a lot with the C3s and we see that. So this will force you to hold your lane and trim up properly um, so that you can make that windward mark or that first mark and so anyone have any questions on this drill it's going to be a continuous drill so you guys are going to start into it and then you're just going to continue through it anyone you can unmute if you have a question all right so then we're going to move on to the other drill that we'll be running which is a box drill so working on starts um, Steve had great feedback on what a good start looks like a lot of what we find in C3s is that you're really, really far below the line um, when it hits go. So you really want to make sure by doing this drill, you're forced to stay within a certain distance of the line. So you'll have your starting line here. So you have your starting line down here. And one thing I want to point out, which we have trouble with on the C3 course, is port and starboard. So the starboard boats are the green boats and the port boats are the red boats. So if you, can anyone tell me, one of you unmute and tell me which boat has right of way, green or red? Anyone? Green. green. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, so the green boats have right of way. And this is a really big thing on our course in particular is we really sometimes have a lot of problems with port boats coming in thinking that they have right of way and not moving when the starboard boats are coming through or hailing starboard. So this, I really want you guys to focus on the fact that starboard boats have right of way and that the port boats must avoid or stay clear. The starboard boats though, need to make sure that they are maintaining their course. This is important. You can't just turn and expect the port boat to be able to avoid you. Um, so if you're sailing towards the pin, you were on starboard. If you're sailing towards the committee boat, you were on port. It's an easy way to remember it. Also, your lee board designates that you are on your starboard side. If you're sitting next to your lee board and sitting properly in your boat, um, that should tell you which tack you're on. So the box drill rules is once the sequence reaches one minute, so we're going to do probably two minute sequences. Um, so you'll have your two long horns, you'll have some time to get situated, and then once I blow that one long whistle, you guys all have to stay within the anchored boat and the three orange marks. Um, so after the start, so once you're in that box and you're coming back and forth, you can see on this um, PDF that there are a bunch of don't be here signs. That is because you guys are outside the box. So we don't want to see anyone outside of that box. And then once we do the start, we will sail up to a windward mark, which is at the very top up here. Um, you'll sail up to your windward mark. If 
I let the drill go fully through. We're not going to do it every time. We'll do a couple practice starts. But if I don't blow multiple whistles telling you to come back, you're going to sail up around that windward mark, and then you're going to finish downwind through the starting line with your sail all the way up. Does anyone have any questions about that? And just to reiterate what Brooke was talking about with the C3s, when you're on port, right? Here's a starboard boat on the starting line. Usually the starboard boats are the ones that are the ones closest in the start, in the sequence, I should say. They're usually the ones taking advantage of being on the line because they have right away, right? So if you're a port boat, you don't really have the luxury of running the line typically because the starboard boats are there. So if you're this port boat, your option is either to go down below, which is what I always do, and you just go just below them so your their boom is just barely passing your boat so you don't get too far away from the line. No need to go way down here and then come up because now you're way below the starting line, okay? So if you're a port boat and you're running the line and you're like, oh, there's a collision course with the starboard boat, I'd recommend going behind that boat and then once they've passed you, and there's no other boats in your way, then trim back up to get up to the line. Maybe I'll make it a little longer. Okay, and then you can run the line, get close to it again, but now you see another boat that has right of way, then you'd go down again, and then you tack into your hole. Okay, in this drill on Friday, if any coach sees a, a port boat that made a starboard boat avoid them, so this guy's running the line and this person's on port and then this boat had to go up to clear the way that star boat had to get out of the way of the port boat the coaches they're going to tell this red boat number one to do a 720 okay just to kind of get the feel of if you do foul it is two turns you don't want to have to do two turns it's really slow but that's what the rules are Okay, so that we're gonna practice that. Yeah, Theo, or Teo, Theo. Is this for C3s or C2s? For all fleets. So if we see anybody be an offender of a port starboard on the starting line, the coaches are all gonna be judges or umpires. Okay, they're all gonna be on the water judges and they're gonna let you guys know if there's a foul. But we hope that if you do foul that you're gonna take it upon yourself to do your two turns. That's and re remember when you guys do your turns that you can't foul other boats during your turns either. You need to be clear of the other boats before you tack or jibe. Um, also, the, so Theo, the drill is for the C3s, but it applies to everybody. You guys really need to be looking over your shoulder and aware of what's around you before you guys go for a tack. Because a lot of the time I see people and they're just going straight and then they're saying tacking and they don't look over their shoulder and they tack and they crash into another boat that's following right behind them. So you really need to be aware of all of the boats around you before you make decisions like tacking and jiving. Um, I personally always recommend tacking at a start so that you're always getting closer to the line rather than jiving around because if you jive, you're always getting farther away from the line. Any other awesome. questions? Theo? Can you, can you say starboard when you tack? And can, is someone going to have to avoid you? If you tack onto starboard and you say starboard at the same time. Nope. And someone's right on You have board. to be through your tack all the way. With that's a good question. Theo, yeah, that's called tacking too close. So you have to fully complete your tack before you can make someone alter their course. Good question. We're at our hour mark now. Do we have any other drills or anything brooke or are we all set here no i think that's it unless anyone has a question you guys are rock stars for staying through the hour-long zoom um looking forward to a great day tomorrow with you guys on the water if you're an a through c1 friendly reminder to bring your weights and um try and to a be watch. On a watch yes thank you crucial my sailors definitely need to make sure they bring their watches um, and water, especially if it's hot. If, don't bring just one, bring two. We're gonna have a busy day tomorrow, okay? Thank you guys so much for coming. You guys can all get, get off mute. And on three, we're gonna do one big clap as a, as a big group and as a team. Mm -hmm.
Ready? Yeah. Mute. Hold on. We'll wait for a few more. And I hope you guys are having fun with this. Okay. On three. One, two, three. Guys. See you manana. See you tomorrow, guys. Later. I I just moved up and I don't have any weights. Like sailing weights. You can fill a bag with sand. It's not the best okay. way to do it, but you can, um, just to get a feel for it. Is that BCYC or Lido? That that's me, Katie. Oh. Yeah. I was like, wait, who's Brooke? Uh, so what you could do is uh, if, if you can't, like, like Brooke just said, and, and, and uh, if you don't have time to get dive weights, then you can just go to the beach, grab a few pa plastic bags of, uh, and put sand in them. Okay, and I also don't have, my tank is only like a little hole. It doesn't have like a screw on it. 